Let's think back to the body and how it constantly maintains balance, equilibrium, if you will. And it's constantly attempting to maintain this balance between acid and base. Without this balance, the cells can't function properly. Acid-base balance depends on the regulation of free hydrogen ions. In fact, the concentration of these hydrogen ions is what determines acidity or alkalinity, both of which are measured by pH. Let's take a look at this slide here from Memory Notebook of Nursing. It reminds us in a graphic form that pH goes up with alkalosis and down with acidosis. Blood gas measurements remain the major diagnostic tool for evaluating acid-base states. We're going to use these values on this slide when assessing acid-base balance. pH and CaO2, that's partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the arterial blood, are listed here. This reflects the adequacy of ventilation by the lungs, whereas bicarb, and this is bi the symbol for bicarb, reflects the activity of the kidneys in retaining or excreting bicarbonate. The body attempts to compensate by using respiratory or metabolic systems, depending on the situation. For example, the body compensates for a primary respiratory disturbance, such as respiratory acidosis, by actually inducing a metabolic alkalosis. Unfortunately, not all attempts to compensate are equal. The respiratory system is efficient and quick and can compensate for metabolic disturbances fairly quickly, hence the rabbit icon whereas the metabolic system working through the kidneys can take hours and even up to days to compensate for an imbalance. This is just strict ABG interpretation. For treatment and nursing interventions, refer back to your notes. All right, let's start with the first one. You can see the values starting to appear on the screen. Let's interpret this together. The pH is, and by the way, write down your normals when you're in a testing situation right away so you don't feel like you have to memorize these. pH in this case is low. It's less than 7.35, so that tells us this is acidosis. The PaCO2 is high, indicating a respiratory problem. The metabolic component, the bicarb, is normal. It's within normal range. There is no compensation here. The pH is not normal. This is not compensated. So we can define this as an uncompensated, you fill in the blank, respiratory acidosis. You got the first one. All right, let's take away a little more information. Second one, you can see if you do a systematic, consistent approach, this is going to start to get easier and easier if it isn't already. Interpretation. The pH is high. This indicates alkalosis. The PaCO2 is low. That tells us this is a respiratory problem. The metabolic component, the bicarb, is normal. There is no compensation because the pH is not normal. So this is a, or an, you insert the blank, uncompensated respiratory alkalosis. This next one, as we look at the numbers coming in, the pH is high. This indicates a alkalosis. You got it. The respiratory component, the PaCO2, is normal. But the bicarb is high. This indicates a metabolic problem. There is no compensation. The pH is not normal. So we can interpret this as an uncompensated metabolic alkalosis. You're getting it. Let's take a look at the third one. The pH is low. This indicates a acidosis. The respiratory component, the PaCO2, is normal. The bicarb is low. This indicates a metabolic problem. There is no compensation. The pH is not normal. So this is a uncompensated metabolic acidosis. It's getting kind of a routine here, isn't it? As it um, those straightforward forward ones develop. All right, let's take a let's mix it up a little. Let's look at this. The interpretation. Let's start with the pH is normal. The respiratory component, the PaCO2, is high. But look at this. The metabolic component is also high. The bicarb. There is some compensation. The pH is normal. So what do we have here? Well, it's compensated. In this case, it's a respiratory acidosis. 
So which came first? Well, the answer is you don't know without more uh, clinical um, signs and symptoms, history, a clinical picture, if you will. And also, you're going to need previous arterial blood gases to compare, because sometimes you won't know which came first. In this case, the CO2 went up first, and then the bicarb went up to compensate, and it brought the pH nicely back to normal. That's why it's compensated. But you wouldn't know if it's respiratory or metabolic if you didn't have a better clinical picture. So obviously, in a testing situation, you would be given more information other than straight numbers. Let's take a look at this next one. pH, CO2, bicarb. Interpretation. Well, the pH is low. This indicates an acidosis. The respiratory component, the PaCO2, is high. The metabolic component, the bicarb, is low. And there is no compensation. The pH is not normal. So this is an uncompensated mixed respiratory and metabolic acidosis. Sometimes you can have a mixed acid-base disorder. In this slide, there's two reasons to have an acidosis. The CO2 is high and the bicarb is low. It's a mixed acid-base disorder. In other words, this patient is simultaneously experiencing two independent acid-base disorders. It is okay to have more than one disease condition at a time. This slide is showing a mixed respiratory and metabolic acidosis. Questions like this won't be on your fourth semester exam, and I doubt if they're on your licensure exam. This could, would be considered um, information for a critical care nurse. Just wanted to mix it up a little and show you what you have to look forward to when you get your um, advanced certification after licensure. Okay, last two. You're going to do a couple. This time we're going to connect you to a little clinical information. We have now a 58-year-old female admitted with severe exacerbation of asthma. Let's interpret these values. The pH looks low, so that's indicating an acidosis. The respiratory component, the PaCO2, is high, indicating a respiratory problem. The metabolic component is normal. There is no compensation. The pH is not normal. So this is an uncompensated respiratory acidosis. We can think about the disease condition, in this case a respiratory problem, acidos or asthma. Think about the airway obstruction and the patient's inability to expel the CO2, the acid. So they're retaining acids. The last one, we have a middle-aged male with type 2 diabetes. He has an abscess on his leg, and he makes no adjustment in his insulin dosage. So we're probably already thinking he's got hyperglycemia. Let's take a look at his blood gas values. Interpretation, the pH is normal. The respiratory component is low. The metabolic component is low. There is some compensation, the pH is normal. So we can call this a compensated metabolic acidosis. We know that stress to the body, for example, in this case infection, will cause blood sugar levels to rise. This patient in this scenario had an infected abscess on his leg. So his blood sugar starts to rise, causing a ketoacidosis. Hmm, we talked about that earlier. This is going to lead to a metabolic acidosis. In this case, the bicarb went down first, the metabolic acidosis and then to compensate the lungs brought down the CO2 level, an acid, to bring the pH into a normal range, hence compensated metabolic acidosis. This is why, if you think about it, patients in ketoacidosis hyperventilate, the Kuzmal's respirations, deep, sometimes labored. Very important, do not, do not put a paper bag over their face. The body needs to blow off the CO2 in this case. If it's an acid, it needs to expel it. All right, well, that's enough for fourth semester and to prepare you for the upcoming exam and subsequent material for this semester. We're laying the foundation.